Hello folks, I'm Ellie Little and this is your daily TA wrap. Well, we take a look at these markets and we do it from a neoclassical perspective, each time asking ourselves what happened today. What does it tell us about the coming days? I do this show four times a week, every Monday through Thursday, live at 9 o'clock Eastern Time here from the base of uh, rainy Rocky Mountains and uh, also do a show on Sunday nights, same time, same place, weekly show. We try to look at a little bit longer view than we do here. Here we're trying to judge what's going to happen, you know, in the next few days. Weekly we're trying to look at the next few weeks. You know, my personal opinion, as I've stated elsewhere, is that you don't want to look out much farther than that. Uh, you know, certainly you look at long-term trends, but if you stay on the right side of the trade on the short term, intermediate term time frame you'll be on the right side in the long term so it doesn't really matter and there's too many variables to accurate, accurately predict anything more than a few weeks so it's kind of a waste of time in my opinion uh, but uh, you know that's a neoclassical opinion it's the research I've done the years I've traded makes more sense to me as far as what happened today let's take a look at that we had the industrials down slightly, the index down, everything was down slightly. S&P's up slightly and the Russell about flat. So not much movement here today, but it's setting up a move lower and I'll show you what I mean here in a bit. Gold got smacked down a percent, 124.35, back under that uh, 124 number, or 12, uh, what was it, 12, uh, I forgot what I looked at today because th this is 10% but it's adjusted so I guess it was uh, 1240 adjusted that should be higher though yeah, I don't know we'd have to I'd have to go look at the contract uh, IEF uh, so 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 bonds down three quarters of a percent oil was down today dollar up again heading towards those swing point highs little bounce in UNL, but that thing has been smashed and some bounce in copper. So, you know, the, the real action was, is, you know, in terms of what happened was what it sets up, not what it did. And then again, what happened in these two where you saw silver and gold smacked around pretty good. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look at the markets. Unfortunately, I don't have the end data in yet, you know, the volume data. So I'm going to pop over to um, stock charts just so I can get volumes. Um, S&P actually did more volume. And what you're going to see is you're going to see over-unders on everything today. In other words, you go over yesterday's price, yesterday's high is 1989.23, you get over it, you close uh, back underneath it, that's an over-under. It's not an extended move, so it's not a two-bar reversal, and it has higher volume. It is a doji, you know, so what this tells me is we may see this thing simply go right back up there tomorrow and test again. Um, it, the fact that it is a doji could bring it right back down, uh, but the S&P still certainly look as if they could test uh, some more. If we look at the NDX, NDX goes over back under slightly less volume that is an over under that should lead to a sideways move or something back to the downside. If we look at the composite, same thing, over under did not quite test that top, a little shy of it, did get over, did get under, slightly less volume, also looks like that's going to try to come back the other way. If we go over to the Russell, and I don't have volumes on the Russell. I'm suspecting it went over and under on lighter volume. Remember now, the Russell was testing a retest regen. This is the one we're watching for downside weakness. Got all the way to the top again, tested again. Looks like it has failed or succeeded. This is a bearish retest regen. Has succeeded on the retest and wants to regenerate lower. Okay, so that's the setup here. And now you're going to have some nested ABCD structures to boot because we already had, let me get the right instrument up here, we already had an ABCD structure in place. 
right? That one has not completed yet. Now you're going to end up with another one, right, that will take it almost down to the same area and it's going to go target that swing point low. Also remember, if we do get some momentum, these lows down here are multiple swing point lows on an intermediate term time frame and that's going to be a huge deal when those finally get tested and broke. And since this is the weakest one, this is the one we watch for the weak side. If we look on the strong side, of course, we're looking at the NDX, we're looking at the S&P 500. So that's the setup. Russell, Fells, over-unders everywhere, lighter volume, except for the SPX. And uh, if we look at the Dow, you know, the Dow didn't really do anything today, just uh, hung in there, a volume a little bit lighter, it's an inside day, doesn't really tell you much. So, indexes, certainly looking as if uh, some sort of a retrace may finally uh, be imminent. I use that word in the trading room, they seem to like it, so I thought I'd use it here. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, the sectors. So let me pop over the sectors, and let's plow through these and see what we got. So let's start where we always do with the transports. I've got the wrong one. Let me get the sectors, bear with me. Here we go. All right, so transports. Uh, IYT, so top 152.34, you get over it, you have more volume, so you got over, under, less, or actually more volume. This one has an ABCD structure. It says that it can test again tomorrow. It is done on the ABCD structure, or basically done. So we could get one more test here, uh, but the IYT is to like the end of its rope. Socks, remember the socks I was talking about looked like they were gonna break down. We talked about two kind of ranges. It broke into the bottom half of that range yesterday. Well, it broke down farther. It's gonna go down and test the lows and try to break under it. And remember, there's nothing underneath it. So if this thing starts to break, it can break heavy. Volume expanding each time we're coming down, that's not a good sign. This thing does certainly look like it wants to test. And I suspect in this bullish market, they will buy it on the test, which will probably lead to some sort of a bounce and potentially an ABCD structure. We already have three sectors that are broken down. In other words, they have transition trend. One is bearish, two are sideways. I've suggested along that once you get two to three, you usually get the rest to follow. Here's another one starting to do the same thing and wants to break. And it, it would have broken had we not had this big spike down that was within six bars. So it's got a breakdown here and you got two of them down there. My guess is, is it's not gonna break now. It's probably gonna hold, bounce, and then try to break. That's the socks. XLB, this goes over, back under, test failure at the highs. That looks to try to come back in. If we look at the XLE, XLE test fails at the swing point high. Slightly less volume, that looks like a failure. It did get over this breakdown bar, just slightly held over it, but those all look like failures. This looks like it wants to trade uh, back to the backside. If we look at the XLF, XLF is trying to test the highs. It's almost there, looks like it's gonna do the test uh, tomorrow. Missed it by a penny today. And that's the July 3rd bar, which is basically double the volume. So it's going to be a failure if it tests and breaks back underneath it. Um, so that's going to probably be a test tomorrow. And that is going to be part of what tries to power the, uh, the S&P 500 uh, back higher. We were talking about breakdowns. XLI is already a bearish trend. It is the one that's bearish. You can see it here with the green bar. This one wants to come back and attack the lows again. And you look back over here, it looks like the next spot it's going to try to go is down into this area uh, if, in fact, it breaks. Uh, but this is not a pretty picture. Lower highs all the way across, lower lows. This is definitely a downtrend. You know, if you're one of those classical folks, you're trying to draw something like this, which is why I hate it. Because what do you do when it breaks over here? Is it a change of trend? No, not really, because this thing was just doing a retest into support 
I mean, excuse me, into resistance, as you can see here, this big bar was what you should be watching. Test into it fails right there, back down the other way. That's what you should be looking at. XLK, okay, this is the big master, right? This guy never wants to give it up. Huge volume today. I don't know if this was unloading or what. Doesn't over under, big volume. Has an ABCD structure, has completed it. Well, it hasn't quite completed it, but it has almost completed it. This one says, hey, that kind of volume, I can go test it again tomorrow. Uh, that's the XLK. We may see Apple try to make another run. Uh, we saw Facebook today pushing on it. A lot of that volume probably was in Facebook. Let's take a look at it. Um, so Facebook does 120 million. I don't know what Facebook's weighting is in the XLK, but I'm pretty sure it's in there. So Facebook, big spike up. Uh, not a pretty candle, actually. So may see some uh, pullback a little bit farther in this one uh, in the coming days. XLP, XLU, we saw a little rotation to these in terms of price. XLU is the same. Uh, that's kind of a safety rotation. Every time people start getting a little worried, they go over here. XLV gets over the highs, back under, and that's the July 3rd bar, so that's got uh, about 4.8 on it. You do 5.6, so you have more volume. So you get a test failure, but you actually have more volume. So that could test again. If we look at the XLY, it's not really doing anything. So sectors. You got two or three failures tonight. Those look like those are going to try to come back. I don't see much that wants to push much higher unless you really get a clean breakout on the XLF. And I don't expect that to happen. Uh, we're, we're now moving into the regional banks. Let's see what the KRE looks like. Um, not that uh, not that impressive and let me see what the insurance looks like uh, what is it uh, K oh, I can't remember what it is K uh, what is insurance nah can't remember it well let's let's skip that let's go over to the ox markets bonds so bonds they test three times they're over that high they did get over it Immediate retest regen, what does that do? That says you can come back to the bottom of the bar if it's immediate, and that looks to be what it's gonna do. Right back into support, All right? Volume here, look at your support bar, it's got more volume, that looks like it's gonna flip around and try to go back up again. Also coming into the bottom of this guy. So, and if you're looking at the retest regen itself, you've actually got more volume here than you had today. So all of those seem to suggest that it probably will hold and flip back around and try to go back the other way. Let's go look at gold and silver since those uh, got whacked pretty good today. So gold, so gold comes back into this big bar's bottom, right? That low was 124.32. We got into 120 underneath it, closed over it, no volume. That looks pretty positive. You got under this one, no volume. That looks pretty positive. Gold looks like it wants to try to hold here at the support zone. Volume lighter, so forth. Now, look at silver. The silver looks, uh, I always type XLV. My fingers don't want to help. Silver actually looks slightly different in that it gets under these lows, right, and does it uh, with some expanding volume. Well, not quite. Let me see. That volume was 12.1. Yeah, slightly higher volume. Silver looks like it wants to test a little bit lower. So what it kind of suggests is that these are not going to get any kind of immediate re trace back up, but a little bit more testing. Silver looks like it wants to test that low. And that will keep, probably keep gold from doing much on the upside. I mentioned the dollar moving higher, going for the highs. It looks like it's going to make it. FXE tried to bounce today, but really couldn't do anything, just hanging down there. This thing's broken down. If it stays down here tomorrow, it'll break on multiple time frames. And that should suggest some more downside. Let me take a quick look at the other bonds here. So municipals. Uh, still nothing special there. The LQD. Uh, let's see what that one looks like. Still range trading. And if I look at junk bonds, 
uh, actually held up today. So not looking too bad. Let me, I can't get, let me try again, see if I can get the ending quotes. Ah, it looks like I'm going to get them finally. So let's go over and look at the world markets right quick since we have a chance and we have quotes coming in. So let's start with uh, Asia. So we had Hong Kong pressing higher. Big volume, excuse me, Hang Seng, and uh, this is the eight shares on Hong Kong, pressing higher. Nice, big, strong move there. Um, that's pretty good volume that they're pushing. Let me see what this looks like on a weekly. Uh, let me pop the weeklies up. Okay, so on a weekly, yeah, it's, it's going to be a suspect breakout on a weekly. And the big bar it's coming into is 10,986. Uh, that's probably going to pull, that's probably going to stop in its tracks here pretty quickly. And then it will be a retest regen type situation. It also has an ABCD structure here on the weekly. And that one looks like it has a little bit farther to go. So it looks to me like it's going to test into this bar before it's done. It's going to test into this big volume, the bottom of this big volume bar. And then that's what's going to probably stop it. And then you're going to get some sort of a retest back into this area that it broke out on. So looking, uh, looking pretty good, actually, uh, for a longer term setup. Uh, the Hong Kong uh, was doing the same thing. And yes, it pressed higher, too. And it's over the highs, 24,111. Yes, it is over the highs, and it's going to be 71,66. It's going to have volume, too. It has finished its ABCD structure. Well, this one's kind of interesting. It has two nested ABCD structures. You have one here, which takes it to the highs. And then you have another one that had developed. It looks like I'd have to do the measurement here. Let me see. 23397. Yeah. Has another one that's nested inside of it that takes it even higher. So the zone that this thing is shooting for is up in here. And it's probably going to make it, right? And finish off that ABC and then retrace and do a retest regen off of that high. Um, so a nice, strong move in Hong Kong. Uh, let me see what the Nikkei is doing. Okay, so the Nikkei just hanging, not really doing anything. Uh, the Taiwanese uh, going back to test the highs. Uh, I don't think they're going to be able to get over them this time, but uh, going back to test. Let's go over to Europe. Okay, so a nice push still. That one had an ABCD structure. It looks like it's going to try to finish it off tomorrow, which is going to take it into the top of the July 8th bar. The DAX. Okay, so the DAX is testing one more time at the top. 98.07. It got over it, back underneath it. That looks like a successful bearish retest regen. This is going to try to trade lower tomorrow. They look like they might do it today from last night, but they didn't. They pushed higher. And now we actually have the CACs, which is the weakest of the group, into that retest regen bar. More than six bars. This probably will fail right here. So I suspect these are going to try to pull back tomorrow. So that's kind of the wrap up. So when I look at all of them now, you know, right? I mean, we've been talking all week and we've been saying, hey, we still don't have anything telling us failures. Well, tonight you do. A little bit mixed in the U.S. markets, can test a little bit more tomorrow, but they look like they're going to pull back. Asia looks like it can push a little bit higher, but I wouldn't be surprised if it comes back tonight after that, if in fact that's what happens. I haven't looked to see what's going on. Europe does look like it's going to pull back. So I suspect when we wake up in the morning, we're going to have to climb off of some lows versus some highs. And, and I know we did trade down after hours, uh, given Amazon and some of the others that reported. So let's take your questions. As you know, uh, you can ask me questions. You can just shoot them to me, 303-912-9110. Text me there or write me, support at tatoday.com. And if you want, 
you can get yourself a login and you can actually type in like others do. All right, what we got here? Well, LA, could you take a look at Amazon? Uh, drilled in the after hours, but seems like there's a retest region plus an oversold bounce potentially on the daily. Okay, well, let's take a look at it and see what we got. So let me pop them in right quick so that I can pull multiple charts using the watch list. GM is another one. So let's look at both of these. So Travis wants to look at Amazon, so let's look at Amazon first. Uh, okay, so let me go get the quotes on Amazon so I can see where it traded to. I know it got hammered, but I don't know what the quotes were at the end. So let's see where it was trying to trade to at the end of the day. So Amazon was trading back down at, oh, down 37 bucks, 10.5%. 320 is where it traded to. Okay, so it's going to trade back into this bar. Okay, so the first thing here, Travis, is, is you have two retest region zones. The higher of the two is the one you want to measure first, right? That's the one that should hold. If it doesn't hold, that throws you back into some sort of a range trade. So the first thing I would note is this thing's three, trading at 320 after hours. That's into this big bar. My guess is it's going to the bottom of the bar because it's already going to fail both retest and regens if that price holds true tomorrow. And you're going to break two swing point lows if it holds. All these are extremely negative. right? So this, the break of these retest regen zones says you go back into a range trade at best. If you start breaking swing point lows, that says you start transitioning trend and you know it could be much worse. The fact that you have this nice big spike here says that's probably where it's going to try to head. That's around 309. So that's the way Amazon kind of shapes up. Let's look at the weekly and see if it coordinates there. Okay, so 323 over here. All right, so I think the, the most important point here or this, this little area right here. That's going to be the most important spot. And what is that? 312 to, let's get the number on that. So that's 312, 313 to 302. So on the weekly, 313, 302 looks like it where, where it wants to come back to. I'd also note that Amazon, Amazon is in a bearish trend on the weekly. Okay? And it, and it did not. I take that back. It was in a sideways trend. It got over the swing point high. So Amazon's going to try to come back. Sideways trend. You'd have to get under this low. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so it's not going to print another swing point low. So it would have to break down here to go bearish. And boy, that would be bearish if it broke down there. So anyway, what was that number? That number was 302 to... 313, so let me go back to the daily now, 3032 to 313, right here. That's where it's going. It's going to go hit that number. I don't know how to do it tomorrow, but that's where it's going to head. So let me see, your question was oversold bounce? No, don't mess with this thing. Uh, the only way I'd play the oversold bounce is if it goes straight into this number tomorrow. You know, if it gets down to 307 tomorrow, yeah, you can play a bounce. Now that will be a bounce trade. But remember, it's a bounce trade, so don't hang around too long. GM. GM got hit hard. Let's see what GM did after hours. Uh, so GM trades to down 4%, 35.83. Oh, so that, that reported this morning. Okay, so GM now, so let me see what the question was here. It got hit hard today on expanding volume below, below one swing point low. I love you guys talking to me, Neo. That's great. And bounced off another. Where would you place your support here? On the weekly, it seems bound by the March 3rd bar. Okay, let's look at this first. So the daily's got volume at 35.35. It broke one swing point today. 
That low is uh, got 33 million on it. You did 35. You got to 3532, which is under it. Okay, so it's going to test it again tomorrow. So it really depends on what the volume does tomorrow as to what this does. But it is, it has hit it. It's hit it with more volume. It says it's going to come try it again. Now it it may try it tomorrow. It's more bullish if it tries it tomorrow and actually holds and flips back around. If it stagnates up here instead, then it's probably going to blow it away when it comes back the next time. So you know what I'm talking about. I mean, just visualize what's happening here. You you hammer into this thing, and what happens? The sellers are willing to sell at lower and lower price, right? And, and, and not much lower, but slightly under what was there before, where here they were willing to pay higher and higher price, right? So I'm willing to pay up, right? That tells you it's bullish and you see what happened. Now you're willing to sell at lower prices than they printed before, right? For some time now, two months, and you do it in the greater numbers. That says I want to try to get underneath there. Now, if it comes back immediately and you find out the selling dries up, that says, oh, well, it's not ready to do that yet and it's going to range trade for a while, right? And maybe it eventually goes higher, maybe lower. You don't know that, but you know you got a range probably. But if it bounces and hangs up here, right, and then comes after it, right, you have a better chance of more and more willing to sell at lower and lower lows. So, you know, tomorrow's kind of a you know key day. You want it to go back down and test it tomorrow if you're bullish. On the weekly. So you thought on the weekly bound by the March 3rd low? March 3rd? I assume you're talking about oh this low. No, I don't think so. I, I don't think that's gonna hold it. The March 3rd low, I don't think it's gonna do it. I think I think what's really happening here is not it's not on this chart it's here and that is is that it didn't have that much more volume when it hit into this low you know if I'm a buyer if I'm bullish on this company right and I see it come into this low and volume is about the same on, on quote unquote bad earnings that's the spot I want to buy not sell and so I think that's what happened today and that's what kept this thing from dropping now it's a question does it go after tomorrow or not okay so if we think about you know where we're at you know we've been bullish forever I mean I mean how long can you be bullish I don't know um, we're talking months and months let me let me actually pull back here and uh, well I don't have time so let me just shoot back over here and do this this thing's been up for ages, right? You know, I, I'm, I'm sick of it going up, and I, and I still have more longs than I do shorts, but it's, you know, it's tiring, <laughs> to say the least, because, because this market's going up on less and less companies. You got all your big cap companies heavily weighted pushing this thing higher. When I look at my charts, I see more bearish charts than bullish. When I look at my trading signals, they're almost non-existent. When I look at the uh, the MTTF structures, right, they're the hopelessly oversold. I mean, overbought. They 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 desperately need to fall, right? You can't get a a market that you can invest heavily in and be reasonably comfortable in when everything has gone up for so long without any kind of retrace, right? If you pull the weekly up, and this is just one year, this has been going on for two years now. I mean, here's the monthly, right? I mean, how long can you go up without a retrace? Folks, I mean, this is a long time. It needs a reset. You know, whether we're gonna get it, you know, anytime soon or not, I don't know. But the most you've had are these little two and 3% guys. Right? At some point, it's going to be something bigger. And right now, I think people are finally to the point where they're pretty certain it's never going to retrace again. And that's what keeps it going until it doesn't. 
And so, you know, keep your ears to the ground because at some point it's going to be an issue. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I'll catch you, uh, members, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, everyone else, I'll see you Sunday night live at the same time and place. Thanks for joining me. Take care. I'll see you next time. I'm L.A. This is and it was your daily TA wrap. Good night, folks.